Hey, I wanted to review some of the uh, material from uh, today, the 23rd. Um, first of all, related to ADHD, we talked about um, the study about, by Zhu about prenatal nicotine exposure um, and some of the background in terms of um, uh, what's known and what was thought about um, uh, the way that prenatal nicotine might work and um, the idea that prenatal nicotine um, was thought to affect um, acetylcholine receptors and cause changes in attention as a result of that. Um, but the Zhu study indicates that there might be something that is um, transmittable in other ways, uh, genetic or epigenetic changes. So um, we talked about this a little bit as well yesterday, but we talked, uh, the question is essentially, does this transmit through generations? Um, so they have prenatal nicotine or saccharin as control exposure. And then they look at the, the children and then the grandchildren, even great grandchildren. Um, and it turns out that in fact it is transmitted across generations. Um, we talked about the different possible interpretations, um, considering that it's transmitted just down the female line. Um, the one possibility is that it's a mutation. They claimed that that was unlikely because it should affect males as well. Um, maybe it was something in the milk, maybe it was some learned behavior after birth, maybe it's some change in the egg cell chemistry, um, maybe it's uh, uh, some change in gene expression, something called epigenetics. That's an inheritable change in the way DNA is expressed. It's not changing the DNA sequence, the instructions themselves, but instead changing the way the DNA is packaged and expressed, um, or maybe something about the prenatal environment. Um, and so um, part of what they did to, we discussed is ways to manage this or to, to address this is, um, first of all, the fact that um, the, the, um, it transmits down through several generations makes it seem unlikely that something about the egg cell chemistry, because those egg cells are never exposed to nicotine um, uh, once it goes down through multiple generations. Um, they did, in this study, um, raise, um, so after the babies are born, um, they put them with um, a control female mouse, and that still led to hyperactive um, uh, babies. And so that makes it unlikely that it's the milk or a learned behavior from after birth, because both of those things are now taken out of the equation. Um, uh, so, um, and so if, if we believe them that uh, genetic mutations should affect mom and dad, uh, should affect matrilineal and patrilineal equally, um, and then the grandchildren sort of rules out some chemical change to the eggs as a response to the nicotine exposure. Um, what they're left with is what they think is the most likely thing is some epigenetic change. Um, it also is possible that there's a um, uh, some change, something about the um, uh, environment of gestating in the womb of a hyperactive female. They didn't test that. We discussed how that could be tested if we had um, uh, used a surrogate mother, place the egg in the womb of a non-hyperactive uh, mother to, to di differentiate the genetic mother from the gestational mother.